Okay, so today is the last part of our hydrocarbon series, and we're going to talk about alkynes and aromatics. So starting with alkynes, an alkyne is a hydrocarbon that contains at least one carbon-carbon triple bond. And we're going to name these by using the same prefix that we used with alkanes and alkenes, but this time we're going to use the "-ein", suffix, Y-N-E. And just like we did with double bonds, you have to give me the position for the triple bond. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give me a name for this molecule right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and number our carbons. So here's carbon one, then here's carbon two, three, and four. So we have four carbons, so that means our prefix is but, add the Y-N-E, ending and our triple bond starts at position two. So the IUPAC name for this molecule is 2-butyne. So how about drawing alkynes? So remember, we talked about this in an earlier lecture. It's super important to use the correct geometry at each of the triple bonded carbons. So remember, we're going to have linear geometry at each triple bonded carbon. So let's go ahead and try an example. So I want you to pause this video and see if you can draw three pentine. Okay, so I approach drawing alkynes a little bit different than alkanes and alkenes. I'm gonna start with the triple bond. And since we're drawing three pentine, we know that this has to be carbon three and carbon four. So with the prefix pent, we know we need five total carbons. So we're gonna continue our linear geometry at carbon four. There is our fifth carbon. Continue our linear geometry going from carbons three to two. But now going from carbon two to carbon one, we no longer have linear geometry because we don't have a triple bond anymore. Now we have tetrahedral geometry. So we're gonna draw the bond to carbon one at an angle. And that is how you would correctly draw the molecule three pentine. Okay, so our last class of hydrocarbons are aromatics. So for this course, I want you to view aromatic rings as a ring of six carbon atoms connected by 1.5 bonds. Okay, so to illustrate what I mean by 1.5 bonds, I want you to draw a Lewis structure for a molecule with the formula C6H6. So the first thing we need to do is count the total number of valence electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons and we have six carbons. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and we have six hydrogens. So we have a total of 30 valence electrons to work with here. Okay, step two, we're gonna use single covalent bonds to connect the atoms together. And I want you to do this where all six carbon atoms form a ring. Okay, so let's count how many valence electrons we use to create these bonds. So we have six bonds attaching the carbons to other carbons and we have six bonds attaching the carbons to hydrogens. And we know that each bond is made up of two electrons. So we use 24 of our available 30 valence electrons. So we have six electrons left to work with. Okay, so when drawing normal Lewis structures, you would take these remaining six electrons and place them around the carbon atoms to create an octet at each carbon atom. So instead, with an aromatic molecule, these remaining six electrons are going to kind of flow throughout the entire ring. They're gonna be shared by every carbon atom in the ring. So how do we represent these electrons flowing through the ring on paper in a simple skeletal structure? Well, the most common way to do it is with alternating single and double bonds. The problem with writing them like this is they're not really double bonds. They don't behave like double bonds. They don't behave the same way that alkenes do. They actually have a very different chemistry and a very different structure. In fact, these molecules tend to be very unreactive. So a better way to represent aromatic compounds is to show the six flowing electrons as a circle. Okay, so let's try naming these aromatic rings. And we name them using the word benzene. So benzene is going to be both the proper IUPAC name and the common name for these molecules. And if we have substituents coming off of our aromatic ring, 
Benzene is our parent chain name, and we're going to name the molecule using similar rules to those we used for cycloalkanes. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give me an IUPAC name for this molecule right here. Okay, so we have two methyl groups and we want to number our chain so that they get the lowest possible numbers. So we can number it one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means the correct IUPAC name for this molecule is 1,3-dimethylbenzene. Okay, so remember in the first lecture, I told you that unfortunately there were going to be some common names you need to know for this class as well. Well, one of those common names is xylene. So xylene is the common name for any dimethylbenzene. And you're going to tell me which specific xylene you're referring to by using what we call O. M P nomenclature. O for ortho, M for meta, P for para. So ortho means that we have our substituents at positions one and two. Meta, our substituents are at positions one and three. And para has our substituents spread apart at positions one and four. Okay, so I want you to pause this video and see if you can draw a structure for meta xylene. Okay, we're going to start by drawing our benzene ring. Add in our two substituents and you should come away with something that looks like this right here. Okay, so the last thing I want to touch on today are molecules that we refer to as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So these are large molecules that consist of fused benzene rings. These are molecules like Naphthalene and anthracene, which are found in coal. Benzopyrene, which is a carcinogen that is produced from the burning of tobacco or the burning of gasoline. Or in large repeating graphite sheets like you see here. So how do we name these things? Well, you don't. You do not need to name these, but you do need to be able to recognize them on an exam.